Have faith in God when your pathway is lonely. He sees and knows all the way you have trod. Never alone are the least of his children. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. He is on his throne. Have faith in God. He watcheth over his own. He cannot fail. He must prevail. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God when your prayers are unanswered. Your earnest plea he will never forget. Wait on the Lord, trust his word and be patient. Have faith in God, he'll answer yet. Have faith in God, he is on his throne. Have faith in God, he watcheth over his own. He cannot fail, he must prevail. Have faith in God, have faith in God. Have faith in God in your pain and your sorrow. His heart is touched with your grief and despair. Cast all your cares and your burdens upon him and leave them there, oh leave them there. Have faith in God, he is on his throne. Have faith in God, he watcheth o'er his own. He cannot fail, he must prevail. Have faith in God, have faith in God. Have faith in God, though all else fail about you. Have faith in God, he provides for his own. He cannot fail, though all kingdoms shall perish. He rules, he reigns upon his throne. Have faith in God, he is on his throne. Have faith in God, he watcheth o'er his own. He cannot fail, he must prevail. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Hmm. Beautiful, beautiful hymn. Beautiful hymn, isn't it? Beautiful hymn. The, uh, this is the hymnal. that I, I, We have three hymnals. My wife and I both have a copy of this one. This is the one that I recommend. This one is really good. Uh, like I said, we have three hymnals, but... <laughs> Uh, like our brothers, um, our friends, uh, Brother Alexander and Brother Sasha. Uh, a joyful noise. Check out the channel, A Joyful Noise. Brother Sasha singing godly hymns on his stringed instrument. Very, very good. Very good. Um, as I've said, might have said before, um, Brother Sasha, he plays a guitar, a stringed instrument, and um, he is able to sing without looking at his hand on the fretboard. <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. I have been asked recently, on more than one occasion, can a lost man Preach the true gospel. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. John, please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures to John chapter 17. We're going to start out with one verse here, a couple of one verse uh, readings here. John chapter 17, verse 17. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along in the scriptures, word by word, verse by verse. Follow me along, okay? And I'm going to address you as though you are, okay? 
Can someone who is not of the church of the living God or of the church of God, can someone who is not saved preach the true gospel? Yes. How is that possible? John chapter 17, verse 17. One verse. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word, lowercase w, is truth. Jesus Christ said of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. A statement of exclusivity. An exclusive statement excluding everything else but himself. You don't like that, do you? You don't like that, do you? But sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. See, the authorized version of the scriptures is his word. The Bible's collection of books, okay? Distinction there, people. That's what I'm about. Distinction, okay? Okay, yeah, 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 there, twit. This says, see that? That says Holy Bible. Yes, it does. Yes, holy, separate, Bible, Biblas, a collection of books set apart. Okay, but see what the enemy has done. The enemy has crept in unawares and so tears amongst the weeds. See, the enemy has done this. And see, because of the enemy, the New Revised Standard Version is called the Bible. The Revised Standard Version is called the Bible. The SV is called the Bible. The Holman Christian Standard Bible, okay? The New American Standard Bible. These are all holy Bibles, aren't they? Yeah, they, they, they even say it on there. Don't it? I can get you. Hold up. Okay, okay. You see that? Yeah, you see that? Oh, wow. Oh, they didn't see that's in the SV, though. But see, that says Holy Bible on it. Okay? Yeah. 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 Now, the contents <laughs> within the authorized version and the ESV and, of course, the NIV and stuff like that <laughs> differ greatly. Okay? This comes from Antioch. Okay? This is traceable onto Antioch. While the Bibles are traceable to Rome, extent from Alexandria, Egypt. Okay? All right? And what has happened, these Christians, and remember, Catholics are Christians. Remember that. Okay? The Christians, Satan, through what he, which is called Christianity, remember, that's what the world labeled us, not we ourselves. Okay? have blended all this together. So how do you make the distinction? Okay, The Word of God speaks for itself. Yes. Yes, it does. But see, about distinction. <laughs> see, see, this, this is coming from one who has put this into practice. When you talk to people, go up to people! Okay? You female dogs out there! Who are doing your master's bidding. Go up to somebody. Go up on the streets to people. Ask them a simple question. When you hear the term Christian, what do you think of? Now, most of the time, people are going to say, well, Jesus Christ. It's like, okay, okay, but beyond that, when you say Christian, what do you think of? What, what comes to your mind? Nine times out of ten, they're going to always equate it onto Catholicism. And also onto the hell evangelists. Billy Graham, I've heard a lot of. You know, well, Billy Graham, 33rd degree Freemason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, as a, maybe he might have been a skull and bonesman. There's this uh, Harry Katz guy um, who would know about that. Um, Harry Katz, check out his channel. Okay, but... Um, 
Have you ever done that? You know, actually talking to people, okay? Nine times out of 10, they're going to always equate, equate what is Christian onto Catholicism, okay? But see, the word of God speaks for itself, okay? But yet, when speaking onto lost people, there needs to be a distinction because the lost person through Christianity, through the church buildings, have learned religious things. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. So, we, as the church of the living God, God is a God of distinction. Okay? Okay? We, I believe, I believe, and see, I live this by example. Okay, I, I see, I don't say unto you and do not, okay? What I say unto you gets put in practice by uh, in these four walls and the ceiling when no one is looking but the Lord and also out there, okay? Put it into practice and live it from a sincere heart. But see, someone who isn't, but watches uh, sermons, buys commentaries or books by their favorite whatever, okay? They can adapt a form of religiosity and incorporate onto themselves the mannerisms of their one that they are emulating, okay? They can do that. Someone who is false, not saved of the church of the living God, absolutely can preach the true gospel. Why? Because the truth speaks for itself. But see, we in these times, brethren, we need distinction. Okay? Bear with me this foolishness. I've talked to quite a few people. My wife and I have encountered who? Quite a few people. Quite a few people. And what we have encountered, when it comes to what is known as Christianity, the lost world through the churches, okay, which are controlled by the Jesuits, okay, Roman Catholicism. Remember, Catholicism, Satan's church, is our enemy. They are our enemy. Okay, they, Satan, through his church, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, and her army, the Jesuit order, have sowed tares among the wheat. Okay, and because of the church buildings, and because of what is known as Christianity, and because through the Jesuits, you are taught to, well, you need a degree in order to speak the truth of God, or the, the a better translation is this, okay, See, lost people are trained to think what is Christian, to um, equate so-and-so onto so-and-so and stuff like that. The lost people have been trained religious things through the church buildings, through Christianity. And then those of us of the Church of the Living God, well, we're, okay, let's, let's go with it. We're true Christians. We're not like them. And you have to spend all this time showing an example and telling them an example when I personally believe and teach and put in practice, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Besides, we never called ourselves that. Okay? And as far as the scriptures, <laughs> the scriptures refer to uh, themselves as the scriptures. <laughs> but see, distinction. Distinction. Distinction, brethren. Distinction. I have never, and see, those female dogs out there, um, I have never taught that if you call yourself a Christian, that don't know why you would or if you you know this is the bible <laughs> okay i have never equated that onto a, a salvific issue okay never and see you you 
you little twits. You're not going to find anything on me where I have said that you're lost if you call yourself a Christian or you're lost if you call this the Bible. I have never said that you have to do that. But see, I am called into this position to be an example. And not, not only do I tell you here, I put it in practice out there, buddy. Okay? And in here, behind these four walls and ceiling. Okay? We need distinction in these last times, brethren, because the enemy is sowing tares among the wheats. It's time to come ye out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. I've never said you have to. But see, what would I be if I say to you one thing and then do another? Now granted, everybody is not going to hold to their, to their guns 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, okay? Read Romans 7 sometimes, you'll get it, okay? But see, what is the test? You shall know them by their fruits. Time? Okay, time is a very good test. Time and consistency. Time and consistency. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked will fall into mischief. And those who are false, every time they're going to shoot themselves in their foot and they're going to keep going lower and lower and lower and lower. And the false always gravitates around one thing. Flesh. 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 And also, too, okay, the Word of God speaks for itself. Someone who is a Christian and not of the Church of the Living God, distinction, okay, I've never said that anyone was lost because they call themselves a Christian. I've never said anyone was lost because they call the scriptures the Bible. I've never said that. I'm all about distinction. Distinguishing ourselves from those who have infiltrated from the tares among the wheat. Okay? And you do that by adhering to this. Like, like uh, in conversation the other day, it's like, you know, if you have to wear an outward adornment, to show other people that you're a Christian? Probably not, if you have to show it outwardly, because it's that inner man of the heart, okay? You are to work out that salvation that is in you. You are to work out what God has put in himself, okay? Not to stay saved or to be saved or anything like that, no, no. But we are to live our lives according to this. And, you know, I stick to my guns until a brother proves me wrong, okay? I personally do not believe it's a good thing to call ourselves what the world calls us. But I have never, look at me, I have never, and you won't find it because it's not there to find. I have never said that it was a salvation issue. Okay, I stick to my guns. How about you? How about you? Hmm? Or are you just a follower? Hmm? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 4, of course. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints of marrow. There's a person right there. What is a person? A spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, parts of the body. Okay? And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You have heard it said... The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Amen. Amen. Okay? But see, time 
and consistency is a very good judge. Because there are some out there who want you to believe that if you could utter, <laughs> if you can utter, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, that means you're saved. Or that you say Jesus is the Lord. Or something like that. That proves you're saved. Or that you abstain from all these things. Okay? That proves you're saved. Remember, people. People can have a changed life without being a new creature. That's why I'm against, you know, changed life. A changed life will come as the result of being a new creature, okay? But to say just outwardly, always new creature, uh, new life, or changed life, excuse me. Changed life, changed life, changed life. Changed life. <laughs> Changed life? Come on. New creature. But see, being a new creature will result in a new life, in a changed life. Absolutely. Being a new creature. Because so many people can adorn themselves with religiosity and have a changed life. But just be the old man still wearing a new set of clothes. So yes, brethren, false lying people, false converts, deceivers, infiltrators, yes, someone who is not truly saved can preach the true gospel. Why? Because any fool can recite facts. Okay? Not everyone over time with consistency. Because like I said, sooner or later they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. They do it every time. And there are those of the church of the living God who will make mistakes, who will fall. Okay? But they rise back up. The Lord holds them up. Have faith in God. He watcheth over his own. Okay? So we need to be aware of this. And brethren, unfortunately, I mean, there, there are obvious. If someone's preaching easy believism, stay away from them. If someone is preaching ecumenicalism, which ties into Catholicism, because ecumenicalism is from Vatican Council II, a work of the Jesuits, okay? Stay away from them. Someone preaching, you got to do X, Y, Z, to get ABC, stay away from them, okay? Those are obvious. But someone who is preaching the true gospel, okay, but yet aren't, sooner or later, their falseness, their falsehood, their fakeness will be manifest, okay? And unfortunately, it doesn't happen just like that. It takes time take time obvious obvious ones are you know ugh. like um, many have even I you know you'll you'll be listening to someone and it's like he's saying good stuff but there's just there's just something not there so it's like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna withdraw and put that on the shelf and then over time it's like the Lord through the scriptures usually <laughs> be like uh, remember how I mentioned to you about so and so Okay, watch this. Oh, wow. Wow. So yes, brethren. Yes. False people, fakes, can preach the truth because the truth speaks for itself. Okay. Go to Philippians chapter 1. Go to Philippians chapter 1. Okay. Philippians chapter 1. We are going to be reading verses 1 on verse 18 in Philippians chapter 1. Okay? Uh, Philippians chapter 1. Verses 1 on verse 18. Please follow me along. Okay? Paul and Timotheus, 
the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making request with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Fellowship in what? In the gospel. What is the gospel? The good news. The gospel of our salvation. Okay? Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of of Jesus Christ. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 under verse 24. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. The whole sandwich. Okay? And I like peanut butter and jelly too, by the way. Yeah. And I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body, that's what a person is, okay, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. When you come to the Lord on his terms, okay, and he saves you, you're sealed. You cannot become unsealed. There are those out there who can make a royal mess of their lives, okay? But you're not going to lose your salvation because it's not your salvation to lose, okay? You are sealed unto the day of redemption. If you deny him, he will deny you. Not salvifically. Rewards and stuff like that. Promises, provision, stuff like that. But he is faithful because he cannot deny himself. Again, like I've talked to you before, how many of you want to get up to heaven Okay, get up before the Lord and him look at you. It's like, I saved you and I gave you my, and I was with you. And you did all this with your life. Ugh, just, I don't want to, just go in. Just go, go, get away from me. Go, yeah, yeah, get in. Go ahead, go. I don't want to look at you. Eternally being branded with the stigma of shame in the eyes of our Lord. I shudder, to, I shudder at the thought. I shudder at the thought. Okay? You can lose a lot of things. And see, that's what the easy believism heretic banks on. Okay? They care nothing about the honor of our Lord. They don't love God because they're not saved. Okay? Easy believism doubles, you're not saved. Okay? Because you're saving yourself. All right? Okay? But... Faithful, okay, let's read this again. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Faithful. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Okay, and... While we're, in, while we're on this, go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Oh, he's going to the Old Testament! <laughs> uh, yeah. Cut yourself out of instruction and righteousness and see how your life goes. Yeah, you'll make a man your example. And Paul was our example, but who? where did Paul get his stuff from? Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Okay. Now confidence... Here in Philippians chapter 2, verse 6, being confident. See, we of the church of the living God, we have confidence. Because why? 
Our faith is on Jesus Christ. Our faith is on him, not on our belief. Okay? Not on our belief. But our faith is on him. Okay? Easy believism devils. They have faith in their faith. Like I constantly tell you, that's what the metaphysical mind science people teach. You have to have faith in your faith. Our faith is on Jesus Christ. Okay? And because of that, we have confidence. And as a dearly, dearly beloved uh, sister of ours has pointed out, thank you for that, sister. Uh, we'll see what the Lord will do with that. There is a big difference between confidence and arrogance. Those who are confident often come off as being arrogant and proud. But those who are proud and arrogant have no confidence. They have confidence in the things of the world. They have confidence in the idol that they look at in the mirror. Okay? See, our faith is on Christ Jesus. And because of that, because of that, 1 John chapter 5, familiar verses, yes? Familiar verses, but it, it, brethren... We're, this is how it's going to be. The closer we're getting to the redemption of the purchased possession, you have to be prepared. You have to be ready. Okay? Many people who you thought were of the church of the living God are going to be revealed that they are not. And it's going to be devastating to so many of you but it need not be so, even though that's going to hurt. We have to know that men will be what? Lovers of them own selves. And see, someone who is of the church of the living God, we have confidence on the Lord because we know what a wretched, rotten scum that we ourselves are, that it is only by his grace through our faith that we have any mercy at all. You need to read Romans 7. Okay? But 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 on to verse 15. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. The witness in himself, the Holy Ghost. Okay? How do you come to that true belief? Through brokenness and contrition. Okay? And through fear of the Lord. Okay? Three things that happen at once. Okay? Three aspects of one event. Hmm. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Huh. Interesting, isn't that? Anyway. Anyway. Uh, verses 9 on to verse 15. Uh, I said 9, excuse me. Uh, 1 John chapter 5. If we receive the witness of men, okay, the witness of God is greater. The witness of God is greater. Men can say, oh yes, oh yes, brother so-and-so, brother so-and-so. The witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay, How do you arrive at that belief? Through brokenness and contrition and fear of the Lord. See, unless you're broken and have godly sorrow, and fear the Lord and call upon him, uh, your belief is in vain. Okay? You, you can believe in mere fact. Okay? You can believe in fact. Mere fact. But the fact becomes glorious unto you when you accept that fact as truth at the cost of your broken, rotten condition. So many like to sidestep that. Because, come on, come on, you're a good person, aren't you? Aren't you? And what will you do to defend yourself? I do this! I do that! You know, there is a time to defend yourself, yes. But when it's something you have to do constantly, th there might be problems there. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. 
because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. Well, everybody is sinners. Yeah, but what about you personally? And you follow that train, that train of thought, the Eta, especially with talking with people out there. Um, Yo, know, yeah, we're all sinners. And you keep talking to them. Sooner or later, it comes out, well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Uh, myself and many of the brethren will have loving little debates. Uh, no, I'm the worst. No, I'm the worst. You say, that, I'm a, no. See, that's the right heart. But you got to remember, too, that could also be a source of pride. But someone who is genuinely saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus. They ain't nobody worse than me. Even Paul had that. Hence. Hence. And see, that comes out with time and consistency. And he that believeth not, God hath made him a liar. Are you a good person? Well, we're all not. We're, no one's good. Get the umbrella out, right? And hide under the umbrella. Hide, your, hide under the umbrella. What about you personally? Turn it on the inside, boy. And this is the record that God hath given us, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Our redemption, our salvation is Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. He is the one who saves us, not we ourselves. Our answer to his grace is our faith. Okay? He that hath not the Son hath not hath he that hath the Son, excuse me, hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. I'm a saved man, and I know that I have eternal life with my Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father. Am I perfect? Ha! <laughs> Do I make mistakes? <laughs> yeah. But I'm a saved man, and I'm going to go be with my Father in heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? We can have blessed assurance. You Catholics, you don't have that. Because that's a sin, right? Sin of presumption. And this is the confidence of that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. When your petitions line up with scripture, not to the mere um, uh, glorification of your flesh, like it says in uh, James, you ask, but you ask amiss, okay? You receive, but you receive not. Why? So that you may consume them upon your lusts, okay? The false will always gravitate around the flesh sooner or later and stay thereon and stay thereon and get worse and worse and worse and worse, okay? And these are the ones who follow men all over. These are the ones who follow men from here to there to here to here to there to there and get everything of theirs. Yes. Yes. These are men, men followers. Men who have no confidence on their Lord if, the, if they are saved. Okay. Now let's go back to Philippians, picking up at verse 7. Okay. Let's read verse 6 again. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, because he cannot deny himself. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, 
inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. Amen. For God is my record. How greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love, and this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Oh, judgment. Judgment. Where does judgment begin? If judgment begin at the house of God, how scarcely will they who are not of the house of God, you know? But First Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 300, verse 8. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, but mighty in you, <laughs> For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Hold your place here and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 now. 1 fourth, fourth, ah, fourth. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 18 on to verse 20. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. See, the false can preach the truth because the truth speaks for itself. Okay? Anyone can recite the facts of truth. Okay? But... For the kingdom, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What power is that? Being made a new creature, not merely having a changed life. Okay? You can try to have all the changes in your life you want. They will be superficial and they will not last. Why? Because they're not new creatures. You become a new creature first, then comes the change. Just saying change life, change life, change life without being a new creation? Eh, warning, warning, okay? And also 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. See, what, what, what did we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 4? Okay. Verse 20. For the kingdom of God, which is spiritual, is not in word, but in power. Power. And verse 2 uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified, who saved among you. Okay, what does this mean? Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. This uh, We've talked about this constantly. But it seems that it's something that needs to keep, you need to keep being reminded of. Okay? Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Okay? Crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, Yet I live, not I, but Christ that liveth within me. Who really has Christ living within them? You shall know that ye shall know them by their fruits over time and consistency. They can consistently speak the same thing. Yes. Jesuits are very good at that, even though her ways are movable. But when they got people in, Okay, when they got people in, that consistency they are aware of. But see, trying to keep up something when you're not, you know how tiresome that has to be? I can only imagine trying to keep up appearances when you're not anything like that at all. It gets weary. It shows in their face. It shows in their beady little eyes. 
shows in their demeanor. It shows over time. It shows in their face. It really does. <laughs> it really does, brethren. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Going back now to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Okay, we left off. We left off at verse 4. Let's read that again. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. God within you. The power of God. Not by your own Working, not by your own flesh, not by your own hyperbole, not by your own wisdom, okay? You, you're mere men. Why are you mere men? Not to live in this or by this. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray God, beg your pardon, brethren. Now I pray God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, Okay? Doing the outward things to make it look like you're something that you're not. Because you wear like a Christian t-shirt, right? Or you wear a cross or whatever, okay? That you put on the outer adornment. You make yourself look like something, okay? Okay? Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates in the eyes of the world especially in the eyes of those Christians, aren't we, brethren, Church of the Living God? Aren't we reprobates in the eyes of Christians? And you wonder why I'm so up for distinction between the two, okay? For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. And also, Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 15. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, capital S. That's him himself personally. For the Spirit, capital S, searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit, lowercase s, of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, which is that spirit of Antichrist. Okay? But the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Spiritual things. Spirit that is in you. God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father in you, with spiritual things. The authorized version of the scriptures. But the natural man, one who is not truly really saved, who is earthly, sensual, devilish. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual has the Lord within him, judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Why? Because the Lord is our judge. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. If we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. The Lord judges us. And we are to judge one another according to the scriptures. Yes. But see, it's to begin with ourselves. 
okay? It's to begin with ourselves. And how are you to know unless you judge? Okay, because 1 Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 4, let a man so count of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man is found faithful. What are you faithful to? Who are you faithful to? See, the false can preach what is true, but they are faithful. When you get around to it, they are faithful unto their own selves and unto their own well-being. Those who are of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the church of the living God, are faithful unto him. And whatever happens to this, happens to this, we are going to keep our eyes on Jesus. Okay? Faithful unto Christ. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Okay? But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. Yes. Or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I, know, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. And how does the Lord judge you? By examining yourself daily. Okay? We are to judge one another according to the scriptures, okay? You are to judge. You have people out there who's like, don't judge me. And they always say that to defend their sins. Judge me. According to scripture, okay? Absolutely, absolutely. But remember, brethren, that judgment is always to begin with ourselves. Self-examination, okay? Always begins with us. Then, Okay, for example, okay, the Lord gives you victory over a certain sin. Then you can go out there and preach against that sin. It's like, well, don't judge me. It's like, hey, I used to be in your boat, but the Lord rescued me from that sin. So I can preach to you against it because I was there. I've been there, okay? I can talk to you about it, okay? We are to judge one another, brethren. But this is how we judge. Not according to the traditions of man or man's judgment, but our judgment is of the Lord. And that's how we judge one another. And that's how we judge all things, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And we are to judge all things according to the scriptures. Okay? Now, go back to Philippians. Okay? Let's pick up at verse 9 again. For this I pray that your love may yet abound that and this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve things that are excellent why how by judging them according to the scripture okay that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ see that ye may approve things that are excellent. That ye may approve things that are excellent. What are excellent? What things are excellent? The things of the scriptures. The things that line up with the scriptures. Okay? Exactly. Exactly. So see, we are to judge. We are to judge one another. We are to judge the lost world. We are to judge according to the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Verse 12. But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest to all in all the palace and in all other places. Esther, chapter 4. Esther, chapter 4. Come on, fingers, work with me. Esther, chapter 4, two verses. Verses 13 and 14. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. 
For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? There is a brother of ours, the brother of our brother from out uh, northeast, who, um, who has been going through some horrific health issues. He has a collapsed lung. And uh, the, uh, the Jesuit doctors basically said he's going to die. And they moved him here and there and gave him a death warrant and whatnot. But, uh, but see, the Lord has other plans for this dear brother of ours from out northeast. Um, I've, we've, uh, um, the brother, he's the brother of our brother Floyd, okay? And um, this brother in hospital, suffering with a collapsed lung, who is, the Lord is mending, bringing back, healing, in that position, in a Jesuit hospital, God is using him as a witness unto the lost. I was told the other day about how this brother of ours, I cannot, I will not give you this, uh, this specific brother's name, but um, he was watching a video and a maid or something was very curious and this brother in his condition witnessed onto this woman uh, through the scriptures and she was writing stuff down. She was a Catholic, go figure, go figure. But see, who knows, who knows? that you have come to this, the kingdom for such a time as this, okay? God will put you in circum, certain circumstances that you may be a witness and a testimony unto him in whatever affliction it is, okay? What a, what a glory, what a praise unto our Lord. You know, I love hearing things like that, uh, being shared with, uh, you know, the brethren, sharing these things with me about, you know, hey, Brother so-and-so has been blessed by this. Brother so-and-so is doing this. Okay? It's such a... Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. But I would ye understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. This brother who is laying in the hospital bed, who is on the mend. You see this, brother? Who knows if the Lord puts you in that hospital bed for that woman who you witnessed to. Maybe she will come unto the Lord because he used you as your as his witness to witness unto her. You know, if the Lord is willing to uh, graft us dogs, us Gentiles, into the tree of his beloved, there really isn't a depth on certain circumstances such as that that God will go to witness unto somebody. He won't go against his own word, obviously not. But, you know, who knows? It's happened for the furtherance of the gospel. So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Verse 16. The one preach Christ of contention. We've talked about this verse before. Put in your mind someone who is like a lawyer, stating mere facts, not converted, preaching uh, facts, but yet by their living another way, making us look bad. Okay? Like a lawyer. It's like, okay, this is what this guy preaches, okay? Something like that. See, the one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds? Brethren, there are people out there who the devil has allowed to, you know, tear us among the wheat, okay? 
to make us of the church of the living God, those of us who adhere to the authorized version of the scripture, there are those out there whom the devil has sent in to make us look bad. Okay? And 2 Corinthians chapter 2, one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17. Uh, okay? No, excuse me. 1 Corinthians. <laughs> 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, 2 Corinthians, chapter 2, <laughs> I beg your pardon, <laughs> I was looking at the wrong one, 2 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 17, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but of but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. See, some will preach the truth in contention, okay? But we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. While they may be speaking the word of truth, because to, to sanctify them through thy truth, thy word of truth, but yet how they are living, the example Okay? They're preaching one thing, but yet in their daily, they are doing something else. Hence, corrupting the word of God. But see right here? But as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God. God is watching us with the church of the living God. Okay? The devil is watching us. And someone who is preaching the true gospel, who is lost, but out of contention, but yet living worldly and is not saved living according to their father, the devil, according to the dictates of the flesh, while preaching the true gospel, okay? They're doing it in contention to make us of the church of the living God look bad. Okay? And I can name quite a few people out there who uh, preach truth, but yet by what they live. Okay? But then again, you got to remember, you can't always live live it perfectly. Yes, but remember, a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 2. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, preaching the truth only to be contentious, in contention, okay? Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Oh boy. Oh boy. But the the one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. They could preach the true gospel, but behind the scenes, they are a devil. Oh, and you can know so much about someone who hides behind plastic. Yes. Yes. But the spirit, but the spirit beareth witness, brethren. But see, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. Craftiness. Craft. Okay? By his policy, he shall cause craft to prosper. Craftiness? But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Speaking the truth of the scriptures. Well, actually a devil. The devil can't speak truth because the truth speaks for itself. Nor handling the word of God of word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Judge me according to the scriptures. Okay? Judge me according to the scriptures. But there, unfortunately, are those out there who lie and put words into your mouth and say that you say things that you never said. 
happens quite a bit. Happens quite a bit. Good, uh, good point on that. Acts chapter 24. Acts chapter 24, verses 10 on to verse 15. Okay? Okay? The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Acts chapter 24, verses 10 on to verse 15. Then Paul, after that the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, For as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city. Verse 13, God love this. Neither can they prove the things where not, whereof they now accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. Okay? So see, the way that they call heresy, the one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Okay? And go to Matthew now 23. Matthew 23, which is indicative to the times which you and I live right now. Why is that? Because Matthew chapter 23 is talking about the spiritual condition of things before the time of Jacob's trouble. And Paul echoes this, for in the last times men will be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, Okay, but Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 7. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. What, what, why did he say that? Why did he say that? Go to Romans. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Why did he say that? Okay? Romans chapter 3. We want verses 1 on to verse 2. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there in circumcision? Much every way, chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. See, he says, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. What I tell you, I put in practice out there. What I tell you, I put in practice in here. Do I do it 100% perfectly all the time? Of course not. Nobody can do that. No, but see, a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. I'm not going to tell you anything that I myself am not doing myself. You understand? You understand? Okay? And those who are preaching out of contention will say, but do not. But see, unto them were committed the oracles of God, the truth, the Old Testament scriptures. And they spake truth, but... They didn't observe them with their heart. They didn't do what they said. They were true hypocrites. Okay? And unfortunately, everyone is a hypocrite in one way or another. And if you say you're not, you lie and your breast stink. Okay? Okay? And also, too, in Romans, while we're here, go to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, beg your pardon, brethren. 
Uh, verse 17. Oh, on to verse 24. Talking about hypocrisy. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thou thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, and a light of them which are in darkness. Don't hurt yourself uh, patting yourself on the back. Okay? <laughs> All right? Yes. Behold, thou, call, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge. Does not say wisdom, does it? Yeah. Does not say wisdom. It says knowledge. Knowledge, a byproduct of wisdom. What is wisdom? Uh -huh. Okay. And the truth of the law. Head knowledge. Thou therefore which teachest another. Teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, hypocritical judgment. Dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery. Dost thou commit adultery? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh! Verse 22 here. That thou that abhorrest idols. <laughs> Dost thou commit sacrilege? Idols. Specifically, only talking about a statue, right? We are to flee from idolatry. And Paul, uh, in later chapters in Scripture, also links idolatry men onto men things of the flesh not just the statue dear friend so you hate idols but do you commit sacrilege <laughs> thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law dishonorest thou God for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. Hypocritical judgment. Hypocritical judgment. He's condemning. Okay? Hypocritical judgment. Back to Matthew chapter 23. Let's read verse 3 again. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do. Not. Okay? They say and do not. Because the scriptures speak the truth. The scriptures speak the truth. See, anybody can recite the facts of scripture. Yeah? Not deeply because the spirit of truth isn't showing them anything. But yes, lost people can speak the truth and actually give really good sermons because... This is truth. This is truth. Yes, brethren. Yes, brethren. But see, also, because of that, okay, because of that, go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verses 39 on to verse 47. See, these people who have truly only a head knowledge or are base their entire walk with the Lord off of something of a man, okay? Their mentors or whatnot. Praise the Lord. 
that I the only one I, I don't I don't the only one that I look to or mentor is Paul who was the apostle unto us Gentiles okay there isn't a preacher out there who is a mentor unto me no 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 I didn't have one of those I didn't have one of those okay that's not necessarily a wrong thing if you have someone because we are to be mentors unto others, yes. But see, some take it too far. Some take it too far, way too far. See, you're supposed to come out from under the shadow and be your own man in Christ Jesus. Okay? Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. See, they are, are only reading the scriptures mechanically, not being regenerated, not having Christ within them. So this is only a book, okay? Not life-giving. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. For the spirit of truth will lead you and guide you into all truth, okay? Without the spirit of truth, you can recite the truth of scripture. But see, without being converted. It's like uh, a brother of ours makes the comments like, I don't want the devil singing hymns to me. The hymn in and of itself may be good, but having the devil sing a hymn unto you? Hmm. Hmm. I receive not honor from men. But I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. I'll let you roll that one around in your head in a little bit, okay? How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. And on that, John chapter 12, John chapter 12, verses 42 and 43. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Why? For they loved the praises, the praise of men more than the praise of God. John chapter 5, uh, continuing at verse 45 on to verse 47. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye be not, but if ye believe not his words, how shall ye believe my words? See, these people search the scriptures mechanically. You know, like in Isaiah chapter twenty-eight. But unto them it is line upon line, precept upon precept, little, here a little, there a little, that they may fall backwards. It's mechanical. There's no life. It's machinery. Matthew chapter 23, picking up at verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works, get the pats on the head, they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their fillet trees and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the upper, uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi, rabbi. Yeah, yeah, to be called of men, rabbi, rabbi, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Colossians, Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, 
Colossians chapter 2 and see a lot of these fakes out there, they will turn around in one way or another and do this. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. After the tradition of men, not after Christ. And then see what these people will do is their works define them. But yet, see, someone can have the outward adornment and have all the works they want, but yet behind the four walls and ceiling. Now, let's read verses 18 on to verse 23 in Colossians chapter 2. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not which all are to perish with the using. And see, what people will do is they will turn these traditions of men into a salvation issue. And for example, like I told you before, okay, I know, say, brethren who call themselves Christians. Okay, I'm totally against that. But, okay, see, I by example, okay, Except when in stuff like this, I have removed Christian out of my vocabulary. When I talk with people, you know, Church of the Living God, they say, isn't that a cult? It's like, oh, no, you, you search the scriptures. Uh, we never called ourselves Christians. We called ourselves the Church of God or the Church of the Living God. Okay, the church. Okay, that's what we call ourselves. All right. Christians is a worldly term given on to us. Okay. And, you know, about scripture. You know, I've never, ever said that you're lost if you continue to do that. I've never equated that to a salvific issue. But words do have meaning. Words are important. Words are important. Because, see, these same people will say to you about rapture isn't in the scriptures. And it's actually the uh, catching away but yet continue to say rapture. Bit of a double standard there, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. But see, they equate their traditions on terms of salvation. Which, are, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a shew of wisdom in will worship and humility. You know, Christ says, when you fast, anoint your head so you appear unto men not to fast. Because when the Pharisees fast, they disfigure their face to show, oh, I'm fasting today. Oh, I'm doing this. Verily, they have their reward. Which things have indeed a shew of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Yeah. They look so holy because their standards are so righteous and so mighty. Are they based off of scriptures or the tradition of men? And because of the traditions of men, do they call you lost? Yeah. Yeah, and on that, of course, go to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. 
Mark chapter 7. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 13. Okay? Here's a good example of this. Then came together unto the then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. You must not be saved then. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands off, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men. As the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Okay? For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother. Whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban, that is to say, a gift. But whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered. And many such like things do ye. Beware. Beware, brethren, of the traditions of men. And those who count the traditions of men as means of proving people lost or saved. Here's your standard. Not the traditions of men. Not the traditions of church buildings. Okay? Not what so and so taught, but what say the scriptures. I I can give two cents off to, off of the rear end of a rat. What so and so said before. What saith the scriptures? That's what I'm about. What saith the scriptures? Okay? Okay? And now, go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Not Hebrews. 1 Timothy chapter 6. We want verses 3 on to verse 5. Now here's something that uh, I've been accused of. Uh, verse, uh, chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verses 3 on to verse 5. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Doctrine which is according to godliness being separate than that. Okay? Than that. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words. Wherefore cometh envy, strife, railing, Evil surmisings. Oh, Brad, that's what you're doing. No, I don't equate people calling themselves of the Church of the Living God or Christian. I do not say that someone is lost if they say that. I never have, never will. What I am about is distinction, okay? Because Catholics are Christians, okay? Catholics are Christians. I am about separation, the doctrine which is according to godliness. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Okay? Perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain 
is godliness. From such withdraw thyself, that gain is godliness. Oh, getting a big following. Oh, they're getting a lot of ties in their church buildings. Huh? Huh? See, when you examine the arguments, it's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Gain is godliness to some of these people. And they do this because they have men's persons in, in admiration because of advantage. And look at how they have gained. Okay? But godliness with contentment. Not contempt meant, content meant. It's great gain. See, like I said before at the very beginning of this video, I never have said that anyone is lost if you call yourself a Christian or you refer to the scriptures as a Bible. I've never said that. People are resting my words and twisting what I said. Okay? I've never said that. Okay? But I will tell you, I have to be an example. Okay? And I put in practice what I say to you. Okay? Words are important. Look, look, at, look at how words have been changed in meaning. Euphemistic language. Okay? The Lord, the word, the words of the Lord are pure words. You know, taking people back to the scriptures and adhering to the scriptures. Whatever happened to that? Whatever happened to that? Whatever happened to that? Supposing that gain is godliness. So in order to gain, you compromise standards. No matter what it costs me, I'm not going to compromise my standards. Because why? I truly believe that my standards are come from the scriptures. Okay? And of course, one ver uh, let's go to the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. Verse 3. Uh, Proverbs 20, verse 3. Just one verse. Just one verse. It is an honor for man to cease from strife. But every fool will be meddling. And Proverbs chapter 26, verse 17. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. Meddling with strife belonging not unto him. And see... Got to leave well enough alone. You really do. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Go back to Philippians now. Picking up at verse 17 in chapter 1. Let's read verse 16 again. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. And see, again, the idea of these people as a lawyer, like we looked in Acts chapter 24. These guys are preaching the truth, but they themselves are not living it. Or as a, or as a judge, or not as a judge, as a lawyer, preaching like, okay, this guy did this, this, and this, okay? 
but not living it. So in that, because, and remember, I've heard people come to this and say, well, to excuse easy believism, they're preaching another Jesus and another gospel. They're not uh, preaching the true Jesus Christ of the scriptures. But see, there are those out there who are preaching the true Christ of the scriptures. But yet, they're not living what they preach. How many of you have said, well, I've learned truth from so-and-so? Okay, why? Because they speak the truth from the scriptures. Okay? Peter Ruckman taught a lot of truth. He sure did. Yes, he did. I've heard from many of you. Well, I've learned a lot from Ruckman. Yes, he, yes, he did. Yes, he did. He did preach a lot of truth. I do not for one second believe he was a saved man. But he did preach truth. Perfect example. Lost people can preach truth. I learned a lot from, you can say, I've learned a lot from whoever, Ruckman. Why? Because this is the truth. This is the standard. But they themselves weren't living that truth. And glad to finally hear that some people are actually starting to wake up to the fact like, huh, maybe, maybe there's something about what some people are saying here to consider about dear Mr. Ruckman, you know? <laughs> you know, but hey, like, like I said, you know, there are those who have learned truth because why, brethren? This is truth. This is truth. So Paul was rejoicing because those who were actually speaking the true gospel in pretense, trying to convict him, by preaching, you know, saying, well, will this guy preach this? Or people who are out there preaching the true gospel, but living a totally different life, even though they're preaching the true gospel and true things? As long as the truth, the truth is preached, that's what he's talking about, okay? Because remember, our Lord said to the Pharisees, what they say do, but don't do what they do because they say and do not. Why? Because the Pharisees had the truth. But they didn't practice what they preach. Now, like I said, nobody can do that all the time. But see, through time and consistency, you shall know them by their fruits. Okay? Let's finish this in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second, no, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Excuse me. Verses 10 on to verse 17. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Manner of life comes right after doctrine. See, a lot of people can preach true, right doctrine. What's their manner of life? Well, it doesn't matter. That's what the easy believism heretics tell you. But see, then again, people make the manner of life the whole thing. No, see, living, you know, preaching the right doctrine and living the right manner of life are like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came on to me at Antioch, where they were first called, not they called themselves, Christians, okay, Antioch. Antioch, where the um, manuscripts trace back from, for the authorized version of the scriptures, from Antioch. He mentions Antioch first. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. 
but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Amen. Alleluia. Have faith in God, dear brethren. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Who, who taught Timothy? Paul did. Yes, he did. And who taught Paul? Yes, Paul was our example. Yes, he was. But see, he's admonishing Timothy, okay? I gave you an example. Now live that example, okay? Because, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And here, here's the ultimate. Who is doing the teaching? Who is guiding you? Who learned you? Who learned them? Who do you learn this from? Okay, God will use men, but ultimately it is the Spirit of Truth. He shall guide you into all truth. See, a lot of people want to. It seems that they want to take the Holy Ghost, which is our Lord. The Lord is that Spirit out of the equation. And put a man there. And, you know, they follow whatever they do. They buy everything that they make. They, they go to their seminars. They go to their buildings. They go from state to state. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And unfortunately too, brethren, in these times, this we have to remember. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. For, De for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed on the Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Almatia, Dalmatia, excuse me. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Hmm. Yes, brethren, for those of you who have asked, yes, lost people can preach the true gospel. Let's sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The Pharisees had truth. And Jesus said, whatever they bid you to observe, observe. Okay? But don't do what they do. Okay? You got to remember the dispensational difference because that was before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Ye shall know them through by their fruits. And that comes with time and consistency. Time and consistency. Uh, because the obvious, the obvious make them so, I mean, the obvious are just that, obvious. Okay? But you will run across people, it's like, well, I, I don't, what, what? Wait a minute. And then you put that on the shelf and be like, okay, okay. Brethren, have faith in God, being assured of whom thou hast learned these things from, from God who is within you. I commend you unto God, not to me, but unto God, okay, who will teach you all things, okay? God uses men, yes, but ultimately, brethren, it's 
with you and God, a personal relationship with you and he through the scriptures, through the scriptures. Yes, yes. Lost people can preach the truth, but you will know them by their fruits. Their foot shall slide. How great will that fall be? So, that's going to be it for this video. This is going to be it for this video. Got some, got some big videos coming. Very, very big videos. Um, brethren, uh, please do keep each other in prayer. Pray for one another. Pray for these children. Pray for the children. I mean the actual little children. Okay, pray for them. Okay, please pray for them. They are a target of a lot of what the Jesuits are doing right now. Pray for them. Pray for the children. Pray for one another. Pray that we remain strong unto the end when we hear come up hither. Because... That could come at any time. We are getting so close. Like I said, I personally believe that they could have that temple up in no time flat. And I don't believe that they're going to build the temple. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't believe that they're uh, going to build the temple while we, the Church of the Living God, are on the earth. Because if they did, all of us at the Church of the Living God be like, Whoa, hey! You know? So, but we'll, we'll see. Pray for one another, brethren. And like I said, this was this was answering a question. Uh, yes, uh, a, a brother asked me, a beloved brother asked me this, and then I was also asked the same day, mind you, uh, asked this by several others. So, you know, that's uh, so, okay, Lord. I guess I'll so what you want me to speak about. So, thank you, brethren. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for those of you who help us and support us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brethren. Thank you. Press forward, brethren. Press forward. Leaving those things that are behind back there and press forward. Press forward. Okay? So, thank you. We love you. We are praying for you. And thank you for so much for watching us if you do. And we will see you in the next video.